Hey everybody, Victor here. Let's get started with the Nation Guide for Granada. Now before I begin, I wanted to say this is not a no restart guide. Just like Wallachia, you are depending on other people to defend you. And, just like Wallachia, if they choose not to, you're gonna have to restart. Because if Morocco, which is the first person you rely on, decides they are not going to defend you at all, and just not join the war, Castile's absolutely going to declare. And there's really not a whole lot you can do about it. After that, you also get the Ottomans to defend you. Here's the problem. The current patch, the AI is programmed to get built up to force limit during a war to fight. But after that war is over, they drop down below their force limit to maintain their economy, which wipes out their manpower, making it so they seem a lot weaker right after a conflict. As a result, if the Ottomans end up in a major war against Mamluks or against Tunis helping you, and they delete their troops because they don't have the ships to bring them back, they'll suddenly seem weak and Castile can absolutely attack you. So just be aware, unfortunately, this is not 100% not RNG. However, I have taken as much of the RNG out of this, and this is a fairly standard guide that most people recommend anyway. I'm not the one that came up with this, so credit where credit's due. But, just be aware, it, it is really the best way you can go about it. Let's move on, though. I wanted to say I have a new computer, so if you see anything wonky, it's because I missed a setting. Let me know in a comment below so I can try and fix it. Granada. You start off as a country that Spain, or Castile, is going to get claims on all of your land, and they're going to want to take it to progress through their mission tree, meaning you are target number one against somebody that is a major power. So this is a very precarious start. I wanted to say, though, you should be fine. This seems like a daunting start, being that is the operative word. Seems. If you follow the guide, and you get a little bit of lucky, and you keep calm and make strategically sound decisions, you should be perfectly capable of building up a power base and wiping Iberia off the map, completely owning it. So don't panic. Stay calm. You have a human brain meaning you're going to be able to outsmart the AI quite often. Take advantage of that. But let's go ahead and begin. First place to start with any guide is the estates. Now, if you've been seeing my guides before, a lot of this is going to seem pretty stock standard. You have the monarch generation, you have the loyalty, you have the prestige, all that's pretty normal. But there's two things I want to talk about. First is these two privileges, clerical advisory council and promote the demi nobles. I don't usually recommend these. The Clerical Advisory Council, while it does cost you stability cost and gives you an advisor cost reduction, which you're not going to be using. Here's the thing, you don't have the economy for advisors at the moment. Not really. So this is not for those benefits. What this is for is that 5% loyalty equilibrium. This will give you just a little bit to make yourself over 50% because you're giving the promote the Demi Nobles. This removes 5%. So you can choose not to do this if you want. Simply do not take either of these two and you'll have over 50% of all of your estates. That is an option. I recommend promoting the Demi Nobles for one very critical reason. This will make them over 60% loyal. Having them over 60% loyal will give you a tech cost discount. At 15% influence, it's 2.5. At 30%, which it should update to pretty quickly, it would end up being 5%. That does not sound like a lot, but it will help you keep your edge to fight Castile. Especially since they're probably going to be an equal level of tech with you, unless they get lucky and they don't have Enrique. Here's the thing, you have your own Enrique, so every little bit is going to massively help. I will also say these, per these traits here are completely randomized, so you might get unlucky with a Cruel, and Bold Fighter is somewhat useful because it'll help you roll better generals, but realistically, you can't rely on this. But that's what the estates with those ones. I want to talk about the other point with the estates, and that's what you're leaving these three positions open for. Don't fill one position in each of these estates. The Merchant Guilds is for the indebted to the Merchant Guilds. You don't take that now because your loan amount is garbage. I mean, it is absolute garbage. There's no reason to take this right now, so don't bother, because it's not going to help you. Take the liar interest loans at first. Once you're done with the initial expansion, you should be get two or three times the amount in your loans. 
meaning you'll be able to take them out and pay off the higher interest loans with lower interest loans later. If you take it now, you'll have low interest, low value loans, and you're still gonna be taking to take other loans. So just hold off. Then when you come to the Ulema, it is eventually you're gonna be punching into Catholic Europe with expansion of zealotry, but if you read what it says, it only gives you the morale advantage when you are at war with heretics or heathens. It does not matter if you were recently at war with one, you have to currently be at war. So until you are going to be consistently at war with a heretic or a heathen, which is all the Catholic world, and then this one Ibadi country here, you're not going to have an advantage out of it. And until you're fighting the Catholics or that Ibadi nation, you are actually taking a morale penalty because you've been at peace with all of the heretics or heathens for at least 15 years. So just wait on this. Lastly, you have strong duchies for the emirs once you have two vassals, and that should happen extremely quickly. So just hold off, leave them open, you'll get more use out of them later. Let's talk about your rivals. It will always be Portugal and Tlemcen. Rival them both, they're not going to ally together to resist you as Granada, they don't care. But they're an option for you to do two things. First, Tlemcen's going to be your primary ex expansion path, giving you power projection, giving you an easier spy network against them, etc., and I'll get into that in a second. Portugal is almost always going to be a rival of Morocco. Now, Morocco will not ally you day one, but if you scornfully insult Portugal, they will, meaning you now have somebody that will help protect you against the mean Castilians. This is very important in the current patch since the Moroccan vassals now start completely loyal. So they don't have any wet day one independence war anymore, meaning they're actually useful as an ally. And you don't have to rely on, say, Tunis anymore to keep you safe. So don't rely on them. Next, let's talk about the army and the navy. With your army, hire up four more infantry, giving your total a 10, and make your ruler into a general. Does not matter if he's good or not, because again, he is hot garbage, you want him to die. With your navy, go ahead and consolidate them, keeping your transports with them because it doesn't really matter and you're going to be using them together anyway, and just start having them protect trade in Sevilla. You can choose to keep them separate if you want, but I almost forget to do it myself, so go ahead, keep them together if you need to. Lastly, before I'm pausing, the last thing you really need to do is your merchant. You have one free merchant, send them to Safi and have them collect trade. And now you are ready to unpause. That is all you need to do. So let's unpause and get started. Now once the merchant comes back, it is time to start doing some other things. This merchant is sent to Safi not because you want the money, you have no trade presence there. It's not doing anything for you. But you're able to set hostile trading. And this will give you 25% spy number construction on Flemshin. Them as a rival, you get another 25%, meaning you'll get about two in your progression for the spy network every month, meaning it's only 10 months to get a claim. But the other reason you do the rival is that 33% diplo cost for demanding provinces you don't have a claim on. Since almost all of the provinces you're not going to have a claim on, this is very useful. So yeah, make sure you rival them, send the merchant down to start spying, and then start spying before the month is over. And congrats, that's done. The other diplomat, you're just going to send him over to the Ottomans and you're going to start improving relations. By the time you are done taking out Tlemcen, they're going to be willing to royal marry you and ally you. Just keep an eye out. Once you see they're willing to royal marry, send a diplomat for that. And then once you're war done with the war, ally them. And at this point, it's time to unpause and let it roll. So if, oh, the one other thing I forgot to mention, your crown land is going to be below 5%. So the moment you can pick a province... If you have a mission here to dev something, obviously dev that one. But if you don't have one, dev anything you want. Just make sure you dev something so you get to 5% as it will reduce those penalties, making it a little easier for you to actually be able to play. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording here because it's just me sitting around and waiting for a minute. I will see you guys in just a second. All right, welcome back. It's been a few months. I'm now at 20. My Navy is coming back. Once you realize you're going to end up ending, and it should be around August, September, unless something absolutely weird is happening, you should be able to move your ships in in time and be ready. 
Once you're at 20, recall that diplomat. You're not going to the, drop the spy network first. Here's the thing. You are allied to Morocco. Their vassal, Tafilal, has a core on one of Tlemcen's provinces. If you mark any of these provinces as strategic or vital interest, they are likely to declare, call you in on promise of land, and then give you maybe one or two provinces for all your effort. It's not worth it. Instead, once you have 20, call the diplomat back, drop your claim on any of their provinces, it really doesn't matter, and this will make it so it's now a strategic utility. Wait one day, or in my case two, because it went that fast, and now you are able to declare yourself and not have to worry about Morocco getting involved. You can choose to call them in or not if you want to. If you do, you're not going to be able to full annex Tlemcen, but it will make it a much, much, much easier fight. The reason why you can't do it all is they're 105% war score. Meaning that if you give them the provinces you're promising them, you're not going to quite make it. Depending on what you want to do, you can go ahead and call them in or not. It depends pretty much entirely on what provinces they happen to want. I want at least these. That is my goal. So whether or not I will get them, it kind of depends, but I'm going to go ahead and declare and call them in. Just because it's a little easier and a lot less RNG. Now if you don't call them in, they will usually declare their own war. And if they do, great, you don't have to worry about a thing. If, however, they don't declare their own war, you're going to have to do it yourself, which is kind of annoying. Now, the last thing here is they also have a habit of not just allying one guy over here, but two. Namely, they have a habit of allying either Fazan and Tugort, or Fazan and somebody else. You cannot be co-belligerate Fazan, because they will either be allied to or guaranteed by Tunis. Meaning, it'll bring Tunis into this war. And you don't want Tunis in this war. However, they themselves are less than 50% war score. Meaning, you can fully vassalize them in this war without them being co-belligerated. If it's anybody else, you should be able to co-belligerate them without any difficulty. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording again, just so I can get to after this war and show you the results after you do it and what you do after. I'll see you guys soon. Oh, I just wanted to point out real quick, hopefully this happens for you. It happens most of the time with me, but not always. When you mark it all as your vital interest, for some reason, Morocco sometimes will drop their interest in everything else. If this happens, great. They'll flip everything to you. Let them siege things out for you. If it doesn't happen, be sure you beat them to the provinces they're still fighting for. But if they'll do all of this for just this one province, I'm fine with that. You should be too. So, see you guys soon. Okay, so this event has now fired. When this happens, you can either choose to fight these pretend rebels. It's a disaster that you will have as Granada. It will almost always fire. I mean, it is almost guaranteed that it's going to fire. You're going to lose 10 prestige, and then once these guys spawn, you're going to get this every few months. Either you fight the rebels, and you choose this option where you're going to get to war exhaustion, and this will keep firing about every six months until either you accept to have this heir that you cannot disinherit with low stats, or you destroy every single one of these pretender rebels and unseach every one of their provinces. Here's the problem. If they spawn here in Malacca, I'm sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing it, it will immediately siege this fort. Immediately. So if you are not in position, ready to fight them so they cannot get a monthly tick on it, you are going to have to fight and re-siege this down, constantly taking to war exhaustion. So it is up to you whether you think it is worth it to have an heir you cannot disinherit. I'm going to go ahead and accept it because it doesn't really matter. I don't have a better heir I'm trying to stave off, but there is an advantage with this guy. He's 45, meaning I can now make him a general too, and I might get a better role. I didn't, but I have seen him come up as a five shock general. It's up to you what you choose to do. In my case, I just didn't want to deal with it. 
if he ends up spawning on Malacca, even if you have a good ruler or good air, it might be worth it just to get rid of it. Get rid of that good air just so you don't have constantly high war exhaustion because it's going to massively slow you down. But again, it's your call depending on your situation. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording again and finish this war up. See you soon. All right, war is over. This guy down here that I co-belligerated, give me one second, you are going to vassalize him. Absolutely vassalize him. He's now going to be able to be fed, and he, on top of that, he's going to have himself some claims that you can now use. As far as Tlemcen itself, give Morocco the provinces you promised, if you ended up promising him anything, and take yourself a bunch of land. It really doesn't matter, but if you cannot take everything, leave him cast here. To be quite honest, it's not that worthy of a province. It lets them be completely isolated, where no one else is going to take it, except for possibly Morocco or Mazab. Neither one of the, which is a massive problem. So go ahead, just leave them there. They can sit in the highlands and think about what they've done. And, yeah, no real risk of a coalition here. Now that I am free of a war, I can go ahead and ally the Ottomans. Now I have somebody else that'll protect me and start coring up your land. You can only core the coastline, but that's good enough. Because now, since you technically border Mazab, even if it's not a core, you can drop a claim. While you wait, go ahead, finish your expansion. Again, Fazan down here, they don't need to be co-belligerated. You can just leave them absent, because if you co-belligerate them, you will probably bring in Tunis. And with that, go ahead and declare. because I wasn't paying attention. I'm going to have to get military access. So I'm going to go ahead and keep fighting this. I'm going to then drop a claim on Mazab. And at some point, since I am sieging down people right next to Tunis, that they have a reason to go after their land. They've even marked it as vital interest. They should attack Tugurt at some point. If not Tugurt, Mazab. Meaning that while I am sieging them down and I have wiped out their army, I should be able to bring them in Tunis into a defensive war where they are fighting Morocco and the Ottomans. And that is the goal. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it and hopefully trigger that in either Tagore or Mazab, and I'll bring you guys back at that point. See you soon. And welcome back. So apparently it's my birthday and I didn't know it because Castile attacked Morocco. Yes, I was still their ally, but now Morocco is getting pummeled by Castile and Portugal. And that called in Tunis, so they're about to get pummeled by them. And now, because of that, Morocco won't defend Tunis. <laughs> Meaning, I can now take on Tunis on my own. And this might not happen in your game, but if this doesn't happen, usually while you're going in on Tagur, they will also go in on them, meaning it becomes a defensive war. So in this case, I'm able to attack Tunis here without any kind of real risk, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. But before I wanted to show this, if your vassals here are getting a little disloyal because you just force vassalize them, you have the lenient taxation as well as strong duchies, which will give you, I believe, if memory serves, yeah, an extra 25% reduction in that liberty desire, which should absolutely make them loyal. Especially since you're giving them land and improving relations and everything else. So don't don't worry about the vassals, they're really weak. But now, I'm able to absolutely just start walking in and crushing Tunis with impunity. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to, I already have a claim on Fez, and I can start rotating around. So I'm going to actually have to fight this war. I'll see you guys soon. And welcome back. So I had a little bit of a rebel problem, as you can see by the two siege forts, but realistically, it wasn't that difficult. Now Mazab is allied to Morocco, who, yeah, probably isn't going to really be able to do much, because they just got absolutely destroyed, and they don't even have their vassals anymore. Meaning, now it is relatively a free-for-all, with the Ottomans protecting me, and only me, while I have two larger vassals down here, and I can just simply sit back and slowly consolidate, rotating between targets in the south. And that is what you're going to be doing. You're consolidating all of this before you move on. The easiest way to do that, once Morocco gets to the point where you can simply fully conquer them, which shouldn't be that long. They're almost there already. 
you simply conquer them, release them, and then use them because they should have cores unless they get revoked by the vassals nearby, which it looks like they were, on everybody in the south, making it very easy for you to use Morocco to rapidly expand. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pause it and keep playing to show you at that what point, well, I'm going to explain what to do. And once you've expanded, you've consolidated North Africa here, which after that you're going to go after the Mamluks with the Ottomans in reserve to help you break the Mamluks apart and give you a foothold in Egypt, and then you go into Spain. So I'm going to pause it and be right back. And welcome back. So, full disclosure, this is not the same save file. This is actually another save file that I was doing before for an earlier attempt at recording this, except when I was fighting Tunis, I then forgot to start recording again to explain that I was going to skip ahead until after I was done with my early expansion here and then the Mamluks, and I ended up playing for another three-ish or so hours. So, yeah, I'm just going to show you at this point from here on. So, as you can see, I took out Morocco, took out Tunis, punched into the Mamluks, I punched into Spain a little bit, and then these islands down here. And just to show you guys, yes, Iron Man compatible. So, why am I showing you this? Because now I am able to form Al-Andalusia, or Al-Andalus. Here's the thing, don't form it until later. If you form the Mamluks first, you can get the Mamluk government, which gives you a minimum of your monarchs of two admin, or plus two admin to monarchs, basically, just for having that government type. And you keep it so long as you form another Sunni tag, like Al-Andalus, meaning that if you finish taking out the Mamluks and then form Al-Andalus, you'll have that government type plus the Al-Andalus missions and ideas for later expansion into Iberia. And since you can use this as a power base to absolutely outnumber all of Iberia, this is how you're supposed to do it. Because just looking at my ideas, fairly stock standard, just ideas that are normal. My force limit, 130 of what's there, Castile, has nowhere close. Even if they had France on their side, nowhere close. Even if they had Britain on their side, which I have had to fight Britain, still nowhere close. So expand in North Africa, keep expanding until you're with the Ottomans punching into the Mamluks, and if this means the Ottomans end up getting land out of the deal, that is fine. The goal here is to end up hurting the Mamluks so you can take them out, not to take all the land yourself. If you want to form Rome, then you take all the land for yourself. But otherwise, the goal is just get enough power base where you can take on everybody over here, or realistically over here, without any real risk. But with that, you guys should be good to go to farming Al-Andalus, basically winning in this form of EU4, and dominating all of Europe. If you like to see this kind of content, like and subscribe. I'll be definitely be making more of it. If you want to see a specific country, mechanic, another type of content, let me know in a comment below, or join my Discord. The link is in the description. I'm absolutely looking for recommendations, ideas, countries to cover, all of that. And I even have a list on the Discord saying what I'm planning on doing and what people have requested. And I'm slowly filling through with links to exactly what people have asked for. So by all means, join the Discord. Let me know what you want me to do. Love to hear from you guys. But with that, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day.